as we've done in recent weeks, we have our NFL draft expert extraordinaire, Matt Dowdle, here to break down all things draft related. And this week, we focus on the players that you believe will be the best picks of the draft based on either value or star potential. All so right. let's start it off. Who's your first guy? Well, number one, I'm going to go with Trey Mason, running back out of Auburn. Of course. If you watched him play against Missouri and against Alabama, he was a downhill runner, and he shredded the defense apart. And now I think he's a great value pick because, frankly, in the NFL, we're seeing a lot of passing right now, and running backs are being passed on as a result. This is a guy who I can see being like Eddie Lacy next year, who will surprise everyone. All of a sudden, like, oh, wow, we have a rookie of the year running back when the whole thing was let's get quarterbacks and wide receivers. Look for him next year to all of a sudden take a second round, low second round pick and take a team by storm. Or maybe get a thousand yards. We'll see. Next up. Next up, we got uh, Jordan uh, Jordan Matthews out of uh, Vanderbilt. Heck of a receiver. A little bit slim up top, a little bit slim down low. He was a little build, but he's a playmaker. Soft hands, gets the ball over the middle, can get it deep down the field. Again, he'll go a little later after a lot of the other receivers. But if you get him, you have a guy with a high floor. He's going to come in and immediately be able to make an impact. And that's what you want out of a guy with a value pick. Someone who can come in at the start and make an immediate impact. Also, cousin of Jerry Rice. How can you ignore something like that? I have Jordan Matthews doing real well right from the get-go. And third, we got kind of a local guy, right? Who is it? All right, we're going right over 45 minutes away to Duke. Ross Cockrell, the cornerback. Scott to see him play a couple times this year. A little bit smaller in the frame, a little bit smaller than what guys are looking for right now after you see people like Richard Sherman making an impact. However, He's smart. He knows how to play the game. He's a playmaker when it comes to getting to the ball, trying to pick it off or get in the way of the receivers, knocking it down. He has a nose just for the football. What he needs a little work on is getting a little bit bigger and just becoming tougher. You give him three weeks in training camp, that's going to happen. I think he can slot in immediately as a nickel corner and also help in the special teams. Frankly, my third, fourth round guy who's going to be starting this year in the NFL. It'd be great to see a guy from Duke oh, becoming yeah. a great <laughs> NFL player. That'd be awesome. He's Matt Dowdle. That's everything you need to know for the NFL Draft coming up on Thursday. Let's change gears, throw things over to the desk where Ryan is with our fantasy baseball guru, Joe DiRienzo. Guys? Thanks, Jake. Always my favorite block to host. It's fantasy baseball time, and I'm joined, of course, by the Matthew Barry of One Sports, Joe DiRienzo. So, Joe, we played about a month, maybe a little more, a, a little month of more, baseball. Yeah. Let's hear some, some, I guess, early season evaluation so far. Biggest bust of the season. Biggest bust so far has, is a power hitter in it. Edward, Edwin Encarnacion, guy who you expected 35 homers, 100-plus RBIs, and a good average. He's doing none of that right now. It took him until April 22nd to hit his first home run of the Yeesh. season, which is terrible. He's currently hitting 228. It's awful. His home run to fly ball rate is down. His strikeouts are up. Everything is going wrong for him right now. His swing just doesn't look like the swing from the last two seasons that was generating all of those home runs and that decently high batting average. And he was a guy some people wasted potentially a first round pick on. Yeah, oh yeah, he was around the 10th rated player this year. Give me a middle round star, a guy who took maybe ninth or 10th round. It's really Now, complete me. opposite end of the spectrum here. Jose Abreu was hitting all the oh home runs and Carnacion was supposed to. Rookie from the White Sox, no one knew whether his power was for real from Cuba. Oh, it's for real. <laughs> it's for real. He's hitting a home run every 11 at bats right now this season. Obviously, it's not attainable. It's not something he can sustain. Hey, you never know. But <laughs> right now, 12 home runs already, 35 RBIs, all of those numbers leading the league right now. They're going to regress a little bit, but he's shown that his power is He's legit. clearly shown that he is a really good baseball player. Yeah, he he's is gonna, a great He's going to stick around in the pros for a little bit. All right, unexpected success from a lower pick. Maybe a guy who didn't even draft. A guy who there was huge talk about all the last couple seasons. Everyone was expecting a lot from him, and he never panned out. Matt Wieters. Guy's only 28 years old, and people forgot about him this year. He was only the 10th yeah, rated catcher. Once the Orioles got good, he kind of just Right, fell once off. the Orioles got good, he got bad. He hit 235 last year, but it was a lot of bad luck. He didn't have a very high BABIP, which is batting average on balls in play. This year, it's up over 300, and so is his batting average. It's home runs all the way up to five. He could totally hit 30 this year, and it wouldn't be a surprising thing to keep his average over 280 and hit those 30 home runs for a catcher. Oh, yeah. It's Big a time. steal at the end of and the draft. And if leaders can do that for the Orioles, it's going to be huge for yeah, Baltimore. Yeah, huge numbers. Coming up next, the old exec gets really angry. Ben Naughton on the other side of the break.